Now, step number six, as soon as in step number five, as soon as your private lender's account is funded and, and, is re and the money is sitting there, you want to go find a deal just as soon as possible. And the reason for that is because your private lender is not making any money while their cash is just sitting there. So go find a deal to get the account to, to use the private lender's money just as soon as possible. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Put on your seatbelts, folks, and get your ink pens out as we dive in right now. So funding your deals with self-directed IRAs. Um, I need to get that turned on. So here we go. First of all, a over half people, over half of my private lenders are using their retirement funds. All right. So Quest, hands down, is the best self-directed IRA company in the nation. And so you need a relationship with a self-directed IRA company. I recommend Quest. Their service is impeccable. I get deals funded in 24 to 48 hours. So here's the deal. If you don't have a relationship with Quest, then when you're talking to a new potential private lender and they've got retirement funds, you're not going to have anybody to refer them to to get their retirement funds moved over so they can start funding your deals. So it's important to understand the flow of the money and how it relates to your own success. You are like a orchestra conductor or director. What I mean by that is you're the communicator and you're making the moving parts work together. So here are the people that are involved. You've got your private lender, your lender, your individual private lender, then there's you, and then there is your representative at Quest, all right? So here are the 14 steps on using private money, that's retirement money in a self-directed IRA. So here we go. First of all, I want you all, I want to tell you all, you don't need to be telling your private lenders everything that's going on behind the scenes. I'm not keeping anything from my private lenders, but we want to keep it absolutely as simple as possible. I want to keep everything easy for the private lenders. All I want them to do is to be just sitting back and collecting checks. If you tell them everything that's going on behind the scenes, they're going to be confused. Just keep it simple. So. I want, as I said, I want my private lender just sitting back doing nothing and just having the checks come in the mail. So here's the 14 steps. Step number one, I want you to write these down on your event um, notes there. So step number one is you want to get a rep at a self-directed IRA company, establish the relationship. Well, you're going to be able to do that this afternoon right here on the event. Nate Hare will give you instructions on how you can be reaching out to Quest, get a representative assigned to you. Now, the reason you're going to want this relationship with your representative at Quest is for at least two reasons. Number one, when you have a new private lender that has retirement funds, well, you're going to want to be able to introduce that new private lender to your rep at Quest. That rep at Quest will be responsible for holding your private lender's hand and getting their retirement funds moved over and having an account established at Quest. All right. 
Uh, you can ask your rep for some nice brochures from Quest. You can use those types of brochures uh, when you are conducting and presenting, say, for example, a private lender luncheon. Um, in addition to that, you can get uh, additional marketing materials on Quest. So number one, establish the relationship. Step number two, when you have a new private lender, so now I'm talking about when you've got a new private lender and they are considering moving their funds, their retirement funds from where they currently are over to Quest, well, you can do one of two things. You can either have a three-way conference call or a three-way Zoom meeting with you, your new private lender that's got retirement funds and your Quest rep, and the Quest rep will explain how the process works. That's my preferred way of doing it. Or another way you can do it, and of course, this, this step is about getting the funds moved over to Quest from your private lender, wherever they currently are. Or you can just get permission from your private lender for your rep to call your private lender and explain the process. Either one, either one takes, you know, uh, either one, either, either way works. So sit back. You don't do the talking after you do the uh, introduction and just let your rep do the explaining. Also, here's the deal. Your private lender is only going to have to sign one document that will authorize Quest to move the funds from where they currently are over to Quest. And then Quest is gonna take care of the rest of it. Now, as I said, step number, this I just said this really. So when you're doing, when you're having this three-way call or Zoom meeting, let your rep at Quest do the talking. They'll explain the process of funding. They'll explain how funds get moved over. And again, let them take care of what they uh, are, you know, the best at. Now, step number four is the signature. <clears throat> so, Scott, we got somebody making racket in the background. If you can mute everybody out except me. So, step number four, signature. The self-directed, uh, the, the quest rep will send an authorization to your private lender to sign. And Quest has got so much now on DocuSign or eSign that they may not even need to email that to you anymore. You may just be able, your private lender may be able to just, you know, do an, an electronic signature. So the private lender here in this step is giving Quest the authorization to act on their behalf and move the funds from where they currently have their retirement account over to Quest. So the private lender, real simple here in this step, is just giving uh, Quest the authorization to move the funds, okay? Step number five um, is maybe take, it might take two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. It depends on where the retirement funds currently are. So the Quest rep should notify you, the real estate investor, once your new private lender's account is funded at Quest. And then once the account has been funded, then you are ready to go do a deal. Now, let me give you a piece of advice. Do not go get a house or property under contract to buy and you're waiting on the private lender's funds to get transferred over to Quest because you don't know exactly how long that's going to take. Also, your private lender, if where their funds currently are, where their retirement funds currently are, if that company is dragging their feet, your private lender may need to reach out to, where, to their plan administrator where the funds currently are and follow up and you know, ask what's the problem because there are uh, one or two companies out there that will drag their feet on getting the funds moved over. So again, the length of this process can be between two weeks to four weeks. Now, step number six, as soon as in step number five, as soon as your private lender's account is funded and, and, is, and the money is sitting there, you want to go find a deal just as soon as possible. And the reason for that is because 
your private lender is not making any money while their cash is just sitting there. So go find a deal to get the account to, to use the private lender's money just as soon as possible. Now, when you call you, so now you got a deal. Now you got a deal. And if your manual's like mine, step six and seven was cut off. So you're having to write this in. So the account's funded, and now you've got a deal to get funded by your private lender's retirement account. You now call up the private lender. And again, as I taught you yesterday, you're not going to ask the private lender if they want to do the deal. That's stupid. Of course, they want to do the deal. You're going to call up the private lender and tell them you got great news. You've got a deal uh, and then you're ready to put their funds to work and make money. And there's only four things that you need to tell the private lender when you've got this first deal. First of all, you tell them the after repaired value of the property. Secondly, where is it located? You don't need to tell them the physical address. They could care less about that. But, you know, what's the community it's located in? Then the amount of money from their funds that are required to fund the deal. And then the closing date. And that's it. They don't need to know any more information than that. They don't want to know any more information than that. And that's all you need to tell them. I'll tell you, by the time you do the second or the third deal, they could care less about all four of these points. All they want to know is how much money needs to be wired from Quest and when do you need it? How much and when? How much and when? How much and when? That's, that's all that they want to know. So that's step number seven. Now, step number eight, you've called up your private lender. You've told them when the funds need to be wired. And so now you're going to contact your closing agent, your real estate attorney, and you're going to send your real estate attorney closing agent the closing agent instructions. Now, let me tell you what that is. So for all of y'all that are coming in to work with me on the Platinum Program, or if you already own my Where to Get the Money Now system, I have a document called Closing Agent Instructions. The purpose of this document is to simply let, by email, your real estate attorney know all the information that they need to know in order to prepare the paperwork, the promissory note, the mortgage, or the deed of trust. Those are the two documents that your closing agent is going to prepare. Again, if you are using a title company or an escrow company, you still want your real estate attorney to prepare the documents. So when I refer to the closing agent instructions, I'm referring to that one document and all you got to do is fill in the lines. It's a template. It's got uh, your name or your company name is the borrower. It's got uh, your, your um, private lender as the lender. You got the principal loan amount. You got the interest rate. You got the frequency of payments, how much are the payments, um, et cetera, all right? So you're gonna send that to your real estate attorney. Now, next step, step number nine, your real estate attorney is now going to send to you by email the promissory note and the mortgage or the deed of trust. These are the two documents that they are preparing for you based off of the closing agent instructions that you email to them. Now, the reason these documents are being sent to you is because you must proof them for accuracy. All right. You've got to proof them for accuracy uh, because a human being is actually creating these documents. So you want to make sure that the promissory note with the loan amount, the borrower, the lender all matches up to the closing agent instructions that you sent to your closing agent. Once you have reviewed the documents, it's now time for you to send those documents to your Quest rep, all right? Now, the Quest rep, here's what's gonna happen. The Quest rep is going to match up the documents, the promissory note and the deed of trust or mortgage and to make sure it matches the direction of investment, which is also called the DOI, the direction of investment. Now, any more these days at Quest, 
your, uh, they can no longer prepare the direction of investment. Your borrower actually has to prepare it or you can prepare the direction of investment for your borrower. It's on, it's on e-sign or you can give them instructions. So again, it's gotta come from your borrower. You can call up your borrower, walk them through over the phone on exactly how to handle the direction of investment. Again, the direction of investment is a document that just like it sounds, is directing Quest on how much and where to wire the funds to uh, fund your deal. Uh, the second bullet point here is guess what? You don't even have to check Quest box of expedited processing service anymore because everything at Quest is expedited. Everything is fast service. As I said at Quest, I get my deals funded in 24 to 48 business hours. Now, make a note here, important note here on step number 10. You are going to need to include or give your private lender the wiring instructions of your real estate attorney's trust account. Okay, so you got to get the wiring instructions from your real estate attorney's trust account to go on the direction of investment. If you don't have that, Quest is not going to know where to wire the funds in order to fund your deal. That's step number 10. Step number 11, your rep at Quest is now going to send the direction of investment. Well, actually, this has changed on step 11 now. So change my words. Step number 11 is the private lender now completes the uh, direction of investment by e-sign. Okay. So they're just going to do that uh, by email between themselves, your private lender, and your rep at Quest. Now, so there it is right there. That's step number 12. The private lender is going to sign electronically the direction of investment, and that goes right back to your rep at Quest. So now, once the direction of investment has been executed, now the Quest is going to process the deal, they're going to schedule and they're going to wire the funds that you are borrowing, the principal loan amount, to your real estate attorney's trust account. And then there it is, step number 14, close the deal. Now at this point, your real estate attorney has got the funds in their trust account and now you can actually have the closing. Now, all these steps that I just went over this is assuming you're, you are just starting out and you don't have a relationship with Quest. It's also assuming you got a brand new private lender. Well, let me go back here real quick and let me show you once you have a private lender and you have done a deal, you don't have to do the first five steps. All you got to do now is start with step number six and find more deals. Once your private lender's got their account funded, you're ready to do multiple deals and multiple deals and multiple deals with that private lender. You just find a deal. You call the lender up, um, given that they have funds available at Quest. You tell them, I got another deal to do. You contact your real estate attorney and send the closing instruction letter. Your attorney then sends you the promissory note and the mortgage for you to review. And then the direction of investment is set up and you send the promissory note and the deed of trust to Quest. And now they fund your deal and you just rinse and repeat, all right? So again, those first five steps over what I just went over are starting from the point of you don't have a relationship with Quest and you're setting up a new private lender. So I've done hundreds and hundreds of these deals. It's a simple 14 step process. Uh, I know it was a little fast, might've sounded a little complicated or whatever, um, I don't, y'all don't need to worry about this exception right here. So the lender's only got one, has only got three things to do. Number one, your lender meets your rep over the phone or by Zoom. And I'm talking about your Quest rep. Your lender then just signs an authorization for Quest to fund their account. And then they sign a direction of investment for each deal they do. That's it. So after they've already established their account at Quest, they don't have to do items number one or number two anymore. All they got to do is just sign a direction of investment for each deal. And there you have your deals being funded 
by your private lenders having their retirement funds at Quest. So that was easy, right? Okay, so Scott, I got two minutes for questions and I'm going to stop sharing my- Awesome. Okay, so from Andrew, how do you get Chris to make the leap from doing CMAs on listed properties to doing CMAs on junky no list properties? Oh, uh, sure. So why would Chris- Show your, you uh, turn on your, there, turn on your video, please. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> There we go. There we go. So um, why would Chris, the realtor, do a CMA on an off-market house that's a FISBO? Because he knows that when I decide, or if I decide to put it in the multiple listing service, he's going to get the listing. So he's going to make money when that house is ready to market if I decide to list it. From Vertana, how long after closing typically do the interest payments begin going to the IRA or to the lender directly. That Give totally, timing examples, please. That totally depends on your agreement with your private lender as to how often they want payments. That will vary from private lender to private lender. However, I will tell you all of my payments that I have with private lenders that are using their retirement accounts, I do not make monthly payments because the, the money is not going back to them. So I either make quarterly interest only payments, semi-annual or annual payments. Michael wants to know if you'll show slide 12 again. Uh, well, let me look and see what slide 12 was. Slide 12 was your lender signs the direction, so you can fill in the blanks. Your lender signs the direction of investment and returns it to Quest. Great. And also, now from Andrew, do you have some private lenders that ask more questions before they sign on the dotted line? And what types of things do they ask? Well, when you go, when you use my private lender presentation, which all of you that are coming in to work with me as Platinums or Masterminds, and if you own my Where to Get the Money Now system, the PowerPoint presentation that you have access to answers all those questions. It's called the private lender uh, presentation. So it covers uh, pretty much any question they're going to ask. I had a new private lender call me last night after uh, going to church for Bible study. And one question uh, he and his wife had, um, that's the new private lender that called me on my cell phone during the event yesterday. Uh, one question they had was, uh, what are the tax ramifications um, and the answer to tax ramifications is it depends on where the money's coming from. If your private lender's just using investment capital, it's ordinary income tax, whatever tax bracket they're in. So your private lender will receive in January every year uh, from your accountant or CPA what's called a 1099-INT a 1099-INT, which stands for 1099 interest income. That is ordinary income tax. If your private lender is uh, loaning you money from their retirement account at Quest, then there is no tax. It's tax-free. In fact, according to the IRS regs, uh, you don't even send, you don't even have to send your private lender uh, to Quest a 1099-INT it's exempt. And I help real estate investors raise private money for their deals. So if you would like to have unlimited funding for your deals, regardless of what your background is, et cetera, but being able to get all the private money you would want, and I'm not talking hard money. I have got a brand new, just written hot off the press money guide that you can download absolutely for free and you can get it right now. It's titled Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You in Build Incredible Wealth. Go right on over right now to www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide, and it will put you on the path to getting all the funding you need right now for your real estate deals. Get it at www.jayconner.com forward slash 
Money Guide. Download it right now. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.